All right, so uh, we're in section 11.8. We are talking about power series. So up until this point, every time we've been dealing with a series, uh, the terms of that series have all been constants. Constants determined by some um, function or some formula involving the N in here. Um, starting with this section and throughout the rest of this chapter, we're going to be looking at series where uh, a variable appears inside the um, inside the the terms of the series. So we're looking at a specific type of series that does this called a power series. And uh, here's a general um, definition for what a power series are, is. We say that this is a power series centered at A, or sometimes we say about A, if it's a series of this form. So notice we have the sum where n actually starts at zero this time and then goes to infinity. And then you have the cn here, x minus a in parentheses to the power of n. So if you expand this out, right, the first few terms, you're gonna get c naught plus c1 x minus a plus c2 x minus a squared plus c3 x minus a cubed and so on and so forth. These c's that are appearing here are coefficients. Um, they're they're uh, constant terms that we call coefficients because they appear uh, as constants that are being multiplied to these various different polynomial terms. Um, essentially, what you can think of a power series as is like an infinite degree polynomial. Um, if we were to cut this series off at any point, so take like a partial sum, then what we would have is a polynomial. But this goes on forever, so it's technically not a polynomial, but it, it can be thought of as similar to one. Um, now, typically, these CNs in here, C0, C1, C2, and so on and so forth, uh, they will usually be defined in terms of this N here. So there's usually some kind of formula involving N that gives you those different coefficients. Um, and this A here is just some constant that's going to uh, appear repeatedly throughout this series in each of these terms here. Um, now, this is the most general type of power series, but a lot of the time we are dealing with power series where we intentionally set A equal to zero. And that simplifies the look of this thing because instead of X minus A appearing in parentheses over and over again, we just have X. So that's, that's something like this. Um, C naught plus C one X plus C two X squared plus C three X cubed and so on and so forth. Um, sometimes if we say, if we just use the term power series without specifying uh, where it's centered at, we're implying that it's centered at zero. So there's sometimes where we might just say, find the power series uh, for this or that. And we, typically what we mean by that is the power series centered at zero. So here's one example of a power series. Uh, this is a very simple example, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 3x to the power of n. Notice this is a power series centered at 0 because I don't have x minus some non-zero number in parentheses showing up over and over again. But the terms of this thing would look like a giant infinite degree polynomial, 3 plus 3x plus 3x squared plus 3x cubed. Okay, now how, what, what do we interpret this thing as? Well, it is a series, first and foremost, but it's a series that we can plug different numbers in for this variable x. So as an example, if we decided to plug x equals 1 half into this series, um, then it becomes this, 3 plus 3 times 1 half, plus 3 times 1 half squared, plus 3 times 1 half cubed, and so on and so forth. Um, upon plugging in that 1 half, we see that this is a geometric series where it has a common ratio of 1 half and its first term is 3. So this would be a convergent series um, and it's very easy to see what it converges to because we know how to do that with geometric series that converge. It's equal to the first term over 1 minus the common ratio, 3 over 1 minus 1 half. That would be, one, uh, that would be 6. But what happens if we plug something else in for that x there? What if I plug 2 in for x? Well, if I did that, then the series becomes 3 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 cubed and so on and so forth. It's another geometric series, but this time the common ratio is greater than 1. So we know that this series would diverge. So what that shows us is that when we have these power series here, we can't just say, oh, the power series converges or diverges. It depends on what's being plugged in for x.
So for some values of x, it may converge. For other values of x, it may diverge. It all depends. So um, what we want to do is kind of investigate that a little bit further. <clears throat> Let's take a look at some examples. So here I have this power series. Notice it's a power series centered at 5, because you're seeing x minus 5 in parentheses to the power of n there. And then it's over n. So basically, I'm thinking of the coefficients of this power series as 1 over n, where n goes from 1 to infinity. Um, so I could write out the first few terms of this series. Uh, you generally don't need to do this, but just as we're kind of getting used to this idea, oh, this one starts at 1 um, to infinity. The first few terms of the series would look like um, x minus 5. Well, actually, hold on. Let me do this. This would look like x minus 5. Then if I plug a 2 in here, I'm going to get a 1 half out front, 1 half x minus 5 squared. Plus, then if I plug a 3 in here, I'm going to get 1 third x minus 5 cubed, plus, and so on and so forth. So generally, I won't write out the first few terms of these series because we don't actually need this to, to answer this question. But I did just want to, you know, practice seeing what that looks like when we expand it out. Okay, how do we determine the values of x for which this converges? Well, we have different convergence tests that we've been using up until this point, And I'm going to apply the ratio test. 90% of the time, 95% of the time, when we're doing problems uh, like this, where we're finding uh, where a power series converges, the ratio test is, uh, is going to be your main tool. You will see in the next example that the root test can also be used, but it's usually the ratio test that we're using. So the ratio test says you take the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the absolute value of the n plus 1th term over the nth term of this series. So that would look like x minus 5 to the n plus 1 power. Um, over n plus 1, so I'm plugging n plus 1 in for the n's here, and then that whole thing goes over x minus 5 to the nth power over n, okay? Now, um, I'm going to see some things cancel here. So, for example, this x minus 5 to the n plus 1 power and the x minus 5 to the n are going to mostly cancel, and I'm going to be left with x minus 5 just to the power of 1, but I want to pay close attention to something here. This limit that's taking n to infinity doesn't affect that x minus 5 there. x is separate from n. So for any value of x that I plug in here, I would be thinking of this thing as a constant, which is something that could be pulled out of the limit entirely. I do have to pay attention to the fact that it's in these absolute value bars. So I'm going to bring the absolute value bars with me but I can actually pull that remaining factor all the way out of that limit. And now what I'm left with when I uh, deal with this, this becomes the limit um, as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1. That's how the, remainder, the remaining stuff in here would simplify. Um, we keep encountering these. So the limit as n goes to infinity of a polynomial over a polynomial. They're both first degree polynomials. So the limit here is just the quotient of these leading coefficients, 1 over 1. That's 1, and 1 times the uh, absolute value of x minus 5 is just the absolute value of x minus 5. Okay, what are we looking for when we take when we use the ratio test? Well, if, the, if I'm specifically looking for when this thing converges, then I want this to be less than 1. That's what I'm looking for. I have to see when is this series, or when is this limit going to give me some value that's less than 1. So this is less than 1. Um, this inequality here can be written this way. We know that absolute value inequalities, where you have the absolute value of something is less than a number, then it turns into a compound inequality like this. If I were to solve that for x, I would add a 5 to both sides. That says x is between 4 and 6. Okay, So I know that this series will converge anytime x is somewhere between 4 and 6. But that doesn't completely answer the question. And the reason for that is that we don't know uh, what happens if x is actually equal 
to six or four. So if you come up here, if we were to plug six or four into this expression here, then the absolute value would come out to exactly one, not less than one. And we know that the ratio test is inconclusive when this is equal to one. What that means is that the series may or may not converge um, at those values. So uh, it's not enough to determine if either four or six belong as a, as a part of our answer here. So what we do instead is we plug those numbers back into the original series and we test that for convergence. So for example, if x is equal to four, then what happens to my series? We'll come up here. When I plug four in for x, I get four minus five, which is negative one. So that becomes negative one to the n over n. But this thing is the alternating harmonic series, which I already know converges. This converges. Okay? What if I were to plug x equals 6 into my series? Well, now we have n equals 1 to infinity. If I plug a 6 in for x, 6 minus 5 is positive 1, and 1 to the power of n is just 1, regardless of what n is equal to. So this becomes 1 over n. That's the harmonic series, which we know diverges. So for one of these endpoints in my interval, the series converges, and for the other, it diverges. So we can say that the series converges on the interval uh, 4, 6, and this is what's called a half-open interval because we include one of the endpoints but not the other. Okay, so we've, and now it, the series would diverge anywhere outside of this interval, because if I come back to my ratio test, if I choose any value of x that's outside of this interval, this is going to be greater than 1, and the ratio test conclusively tells us that the series diverges in those cases. Let's take a look at a different problem. For which values of x does this series converge? This is also a power series. This one is centered at 0. And the coefficients come from this n to the power of n here. I'm not going to write the series out like I did for the first one, because all we really need to do is test this for convergence. Um, normally, I would be using the ratio test, but the root test works a little bit better for this problem. So we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the nth root. And actually, the absolute value does belong on the inside here, so I'm going to put it on the inside. Absolute value of um, n to the n, x to the n. So let's actually make that like a parenthesis right there. Okay. Um, so remember, n is a positive number. So when I uh, take this absolute value, this n to the power of n isn't going to change. Um, but the x could be positive or negative. So I want to think of this as the limit as uh, n goes to infinity of the nth root of n times the absolute value of x. And that whole thing I can raise to the power of n like that. So that by taking the absolute value of x here, I'm accounting for the fact that I want this to be positive before taking the nth root, because it's the only thing that has the potential to make this thing negative. So putting an absolute value there solves that problem. I can now cancel the nth root with that nth power, and this is the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, n times the absolute value of x, which is equal to the absolute value of x. Remember, we can bring that out because it's unaffected by the limit. The limit as n goes to infinity of just n. Now, this expression here, um, if x is anything other than zero, so if it's any positive or negative number, then I'm going to end up with a positive number after taking this absolute value here. And any positive number, no matter how small, if I multiply it to this, is going to be infinity because this limit goes to infinity. So it doesn't matter how small that is. So this is infinity if x is not 0. But it equals 0 if x is equal to zero. 
Because if x is equal to zero, then no matter uh, what this limit is, I'm multiplying it by zero. In fact, it's easier to see that if we come back a step. No matter how big n gets, we keep multiplying it by zero, so we're just taking the limit as n goes to infinity of zero, which is zero. In this case, zero is less than one, so the root test would say that the series converges for that value, but only that value. So the series converges at x equals zero. Sometimes we just prefer this notation, the set containing the number zero. That's what that represents, okay? So that's uh, another case. Well, I wanna look at one more case where we're looking for where a power series converges. So for what values of x does this series converge? Now this is actually a very important power series. We're gonna encounter this one again. Um, in section 11.10. So don't forget about this one. We'll talk about it again. Um, to see how this one converges or where it converges, we do the same thing. The limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial over x to the power of n over n factorial. Okay? Looking at what happens... I have, when I'm simplifying things, I'll end up with an x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. x to the n cancels with all but one of those x's. So that x by itself can be brought out of the limit, but I'm going to bring the absolute value with it, as we've already seen. So I get the absolute value of x times the limit as n goes to infinity. And then I can, uh, uh, you know, simplify this stuff that's still in here. I'm going to end up with n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Now remember, when we're dealing with factorials, all of that n factorial will cancel with almost all of this n plus 1 factorial. The n plus 1 will actually be the only thing that's left. So I get the absolute value of x times the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 1. But this limit goes to 0. And regardless of what x is, 0 times the absolute value of x will still be 0. That's less than 1, so by the ratio test, this thing will converge no matter what I plug in for x. So I can say that the series converges for, or on is the term we typically use, converges on the interval negative infinity to infinity, that's the set of all real numbers. That means x can be any real number, okay? Now, these three cases that we looked at, these three examples were chosen specifically because power series always fall into one of those three cases. So this, uh, this theorem kind of summarizes that. So if you have a power series, here's like a general power series, there are only three possibilities. The series converges only when x equals a, the thing that it's centered at. Now that makes sense because if I plug a in for x, then each of these terms will have an a minus a, which is zero in them. So it just becomes an infinite sum of zeros, which is going to be zero. Um, series will always converge at the number that they are centered at. A power series, sorry. Um, but one possible case is that's the only place that it converges, the only value of x. Another possibility, like the one that we just saw here, is the series may converge for all real numbers x. So that's the other, that's another case that we just saw. The very first example that we looked at is this third case. And that's a little bit, it's stated a little bit more complicated, but it says there is a positive number r such that the series converges if the absolute value of x minus a is less than r and diverges if the absolute value of x minus a is greater than r. So going back to the first example that we saw, in this step right here, I ended up getting this when I did my ratio test. The absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 1. Notice x minus 5 is also what appeared in my power series, so that 5 is the a that we're centering our power series at. But what this is saying is that this will only converge when the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than 1, except possibly also at end points of this interval that it creates. But this represents an interval. 
could be an open interval, a half open interval, or a closed interval. It kind of depends on what happens at the end points. But uh, regardless, it will also diverge for any number outside of that interval. Okay. Now, in that third case, this capital R is what we call the radius of convergence. And um, in the previous two cases, case one, case two, we can also talk about the radius of convergence. Um, in the first case, we say that the radius of convergence is zero. And basically what that radius of convergence represents is how far away you can move from A on a number line and still get values that uh, the power series converges for. Okay, so um, in the event that the series converges for all real numbers, we define the radius of convergence to be infinity. Okay, so um, looking at those three cases again, if I wanted to write the intervals of convergence, which is the sets of all numbers for which a power series converges, if I want to write the intervals of convergence um, in set notation, then case one would look like this, the set containing just A. That's what we saw previously in our example. We had the set containing just zero. It could look like this, an interval of all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Or it could look like this, a, the interval from A minus R to a plus r. So this is like starting at the number a on the number line. You can kind of see this here. a plus r would take me r units this direction, and a minus r would take me r units this direction, which creates that interval. And it kind of makes sense why we're using the word radius for r, because it's exactly half the width of that interval. Um, a is the center of that interval, and that's easy to remember because we say that the power series that we would have gotten this from is also centered at A. But in this case, the power series will converge for all of the numbers in between A minus R and A plus R and diverge for everything outside of that interval. And then like we said before, it's possible that the power series will converge at the different end points. So in case three, there are four possibilities for your interval of convergence. It can be any one of these four, depending on whether or not which of these um, end points still belongs to that interval of convergence. Okay, so um, we're going to do this part in the next video, but we have a couple of examples to look at where we want to take a power series that we're given and determine what its interval and radius of convergence are, but we're, we're going to save that for part two.